What's happening this week on your favorite soap operas? It's time to talk about all the daytime drama on Soap Central Live with Dan J. Kroll. Get ready for the latest soap news, scoops, recaps, and interviews with your favorite daytime stars. Now, here's Dan. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Soap Central Live. This is a Soap Central Live Extra. I'm your host, Dan Kroll from SoapCentral.com, and recently I had the opportunity to sit down with funny lady Suzanne Wong, who you may remember as Brenda's bitchy wedding planner on General Hospital. Well, in real life, Suzanne isn't nearly as bitchy as her character, although some of her Twitter exchanges may lead you to believe otherwise. Well, she and I were sitting down to talk about an against all odds amazing opportunity for her. She is a 2014 potential Emmy nominee in the Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series category for her work as Davina on Here TV's From Here On Out. Haven't heard of Here TV or From Here On Out? Well, you're probably not alone, but as you're about to hear, Suzanne Wong is not someone who can be told what she can and cannot do. This is a brief bit of the interview that will air on Soap Central Live in its entirety at a later date. But I wanted you to hear Suzanne Wallen talking about this potentially amazing and groundbreaking honor for her, as well as some of the other incredible challenges that she's faced in her life. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm even better now that we've finally had an opportunity to connect and I talk. Know. I'm looking forward no, to this. Me too. So, I, I mean, I kind of want to get right into an amazing story. Normally when I talk to people, you know, I say thank you. It's a pleasure that you've taken some time out of your schedule to you know, chat with me. And, and I mean that truly and sincerely. But for you, it's amazing, Suzanne, that, I, that you're here to be able to talk to me. I mean, it's such it an amazing story, such a, you know, a powerful story. Let, let's talk about that a little bit. Tell the listeners who are listening to the, to the show what do I mean when I say that it's a miracle that you're here with me today? Well, in 2006, I was doing a self-breast exam, and I found a tiny lump in my left breast, and I went and got it biopsied to make sure it was just, you know, nothing fibroid cyst. And I got a phone call from my doctor about two weeks later saying, uh, your test results came back positive for breast cancer. And I said, wow this is going to be great material for my stand-up comedy act someday. And she said, what? And I said, well, haven't you heard tragedy plus time equals comedy, so this is going to kill. And I really meant that. It was so absurd to me, the whole conversation. And she says, uh, you need to get here right away and schedule a surgery. She, she didn't have any sense of humor about it whatsoever, <laughs> which sort of made me laugh more. When I find something funny and somebody else gets more serious, it, it makes me laugh even harder. Anyway, and then I said, are you sure my boobs are so small? How is that even possible? Do you want to retest? And she says, no, you need to come in here. So anyway, I got a lumpectomy. And I researched chemo and radiation while I was recovering from the lumpectomy and sort of decided that that wasn't for me. And this is a long story that would take you, um, you know, probably three hours to really hear in its completion. But I'll, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. Basically, I had breast cancer three times in six years Jeez. because, like most Asians, I'm an overachiever. What, what? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Can't do that just once or twice. I'm going to do it three times. I'm better than all of you Show other off. cancer people. Yeah. And the third time it went to stage four, and if you don't know what stage four cancer means, there is no stage five. Stage five is you're dead. So stage four means it metastasized. So it spread to my skull, my sternum, my left and right breast, my lymph nodes, my back, my hip. Yeah, it was it was everywhere. Um, so at that point, uh, all the doctors were basically saying, oh, wah, 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 sorry about that. <laughs> Get your affairs in order. Uh, one oncologist told my best friend that I had about six months wow. left to live, and that was three years ago. So, and I didn't do any research about the of surviving or reversing it because 
I think that believing in statistics is the opposite of believing in miracles, and I believe in miracles. So, I, and besides, to me, statistics, honestly, are just numbers about what other people created in the past and don't have to necessarily have anything to do with my present and my future. Because let's face it, anybody who's ever been the first at something, any pioneer, any inventor, if the Wright brothers had looked at statistics to determine whether or not to try to invent an airplane, they would have thought, oh, well, it's not possible. It's never been done before. It can never be done. Wow. Right? So I, I basically just, uh, I, I, ch I tried Western medicine and Eastern. I did some alternative, holistic, illegal, controversial treatments. I, I changed what I eat and what I drink and what I think. I traveled to Italy. I, I actually learned a bunch of life lessons and spiritual lessons. And the culmination of my entire wacky journey is that I, quote unquote, miraculously reversed stage four breast cancer and am now completely cancer free. Which so is amazing. That I'm alive. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's very uh, interesting. Isn't isn't even a begin to accurately display? But you know, a lot of people look at things like this and they'll say, "You're obviously here, Suzanne, for a reason. There's a reason that." Yeah this went the way have you figured that out yet or do you are you still on that absolutely journey absolutely figured it out i have absolutely figured it out and because i finally figured it out because i didn't figure it out the first time i got cancer or the second time i got cancer it took the third time and it took stage 4 because that's how damn stubborn i am hmm. right there were these life lessons that were right there screaming at me but i was so stubborn that i refused to listen until i was absolutely incapacitated and horizontal in my bed in my house for three months unable to do anything for myself I had had um, multiple surgeries on my left breast I had had back surgery hip replacement surgery I, I got about six weeks of radiation I did an oral form of chemotherapy called the Loda which is much less toxic and it doesn't make you throw up or make all your hair fall out um, it's interesting about the Zolota because it comes in pill form, right? And it's supposed to reverse cancer in the bones. And on the label it says that it's perfectly safe. But it also says in the instructions that you are to wear your safety goggles and rubber gloves when handling the pills. And now I, I say what I mean. I surround myself with, I, you know, with people that I really love who really love me and I have incredible loyal friends. Speaking of which, one of which is Vanessa Marcel, who uh, we became best friends on the set of NBC's Las Vegas. She was a series regular, and I was supposed to come on and do, you know, one tiny funny part. And because she is who she is, she had talked to me before we did our short scene and found out that I was a stand-up comic, and we really had an affinity for each other, which I thought she had with everybody. Um, and then after we were done shooting the scene, she says to the director, hey, Suzanne's a stand-up comic. Why don't you give her a free take? Let her improvise a take. Oh, wow. The scene. And he said, oh, okay. And so I'm thinking, wait, what's happening right now? The beautiful female star of this show is letting me be even funnier on the show? I mean, that, that just does not happen in my experience in Los Angeles. So he says, sure, great, go for it. And the way I got the part on General Hospital when Vanessa returned as Brenda was because she thought, well, who would be a better psycho wedding planner for Sonny and Brenda's wedding than Suzanne? <laughs> it's nice when people think of psycho wedding planners, you know, that, they, that your name comes to mind. I love that, right? Because she knew that I could have fun with, you know, being a complete bitch on the show and that we would have great chemistry because we would be basically adversarial on the show, sort of how we were, she played my boss on Las Vegas, and we were, you know, like the very first episode that I was ever on that I thought was going to be my only role on the show, um, she comes to my character, Polly, and says someone had uh, complained that I had overcharged this woman for her bikini wax, and I say, no overcharge, she hairy like a man. I have to go all the way around corner, clean basement. I lift up a sheet, look like a jungle. No overcharge. And this is like this crazy, ridiculous character who's talking about some woman's, you know, hairy bush and how horrible it was to wax it. And that, that's how our friendship began. And Vanessa 
I mean, she she and I basically became inseparable from that moment on, and she drove me to every cancer treatment appointment every wow. day for a year after Las Vegas got canceled. Wow. And she would not want anyone to know that because, you know, she's not the kind of person that gives in order to get acknowledgement or credit or glory for it, so... It was so much fun to be in General Hospital because when I was in high school, I watched all my children one life to live in General Hospital in that order every single day. Anyway, talk about surreal. So now um, William Shatner and I are buddies on Twitter and occasionally tweeting back and forth to each other. So he likes to tweet. I don't know if you're ever on his page, but he likes to tweet things like, today is National Chocolate Cupcake Day. Yep. Hey, everyone, it's National Chocolate Cupcake Day. Or... You know, tomorrow is going to be National Mashed Potatoes Day. It's always a food, right? So I write to him, hey, Bill, good morning. When is National Kimchi Day, which is a Korean spicy dish? And he tweets back, I never look ahead, which is hilarious. (laughs) I, I write, would you ever look at this? And I put a link to my character i'm i'm on a new sitcom called from here on out which is on here tv which is an all-gay cable subscription network and i have this crazy part called divina and i have a highlight reel of my scenes and i put a link to that i go would you ever look at this and i'm actually an underdog on the ballot for potential emmy nomination as outstanding lead actress in a comedy series for this little sitcom that no one has seen so i wrote i'm an underdog for this crazy role in the sitcom that no one has seen and about 15 minutes later, he tweets, Crazy Divina, which is my character's name, with an exclamation point and a wink and a smile. I'm thinking, oh, my God, he wow. watched it? And then he, you know, tweets about my character being crazy and my name. And then I realize he has retweeted that link with my highlight scenes to his 1.85 million followers. <laughs> What is happening right now? My life, is, my life has gone from, oh, you're going to be dead in six months from stage four breast cancer, to William Shatner is retweeting your highlight reel of your scenes from your new sitcom to his 1.85 million followers. That's crazy. I mean, what goes through your mind when you see this? I mean, it, it's got to be crazy. crazy. It's crazy. But you know what? My, uh, the truth about miracles to me is that, that there. In a way, nothing's a miracle because I think that I really believe that my my attitude is what makes my life, my thoughts and my attitude and the way I live my life and the actions that I take and the faith that I have. You know what I mean? That if I, I'm just a good person and I, I have a positive attitude and I take actions towards that, that, that everything will go my way. Will Suzanne get her Emmy nomination? Well, that is the perfect soap cliffhanger for this episode of Soap Central Live. Voting for the Emmys ends on June 20th, so we will find out. And Suzanne's entire interview will air on Soap Central Live in the near future. Please follow at Soap Central on Twitter. For more information, you can find out the date that that episode will air. You can also follow Suzanne Wong at Suzanne Wong on Twitter. And if you are so inclined, you can also follow me at Dan J. Kroll on Twitter. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to this special edition of Soap Central Live Extra. We'll be back on our regular Friday episodes at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific at SoapCentralLive.com. I hope that you'll join us then.